This video is going to go over how to apply for the EIDL loan. Um, they did make a few brief changes from the other day, and it just makes it a little bit harder to get to the loan application. Uh, so if you have the link, which Squire has been sending out just the link to people, um, you can just go straight to there. But if not, I'm going to just walk you through how to get there by going to SBA.gov. So if we go to SBA.gov and then we just click on this up at the top, um, that's going to take us into our small business guidance for loan resources. If we scroll down, there's coronavirus funding options. At the bottom of this section, it says to learn more about relief options available for your business, click here. So if you click there, that's going to get you to our coronavirus relief options page. As you scroll down, it will show you the different funding options that they have. So this one specifically is the EIDL loan. So we are going to come here and click learn more. And that's going to take us into a page that goes over the EIDL loan. Um, it will tell you overview and then eligibility at the bottom of this eligibility section. You can click here to get to the application. Once you get here, you'll see your application screen. Um, this application does not save, so you need to do it all in one go. So this video is to help you gather the information that you need so that you can do that very easily. I have had a timeout on me. I don't know exactly how long it takes to time out, but my recommendation is to use this video to gather the information that you need, and then you can go back and put it in without worrying about the timeout. So we're going to do one real quick, and this is just going to be for a business that doesn't have more than 500 employees. There are other options in here relating to this. Please go through and select the one that is most accurate for you. Um, underneath that, you have your eligibility requirements. For example, you cannot be engaged in illegal activity. No um, owner that has greater than 50% ownership can be delinquent on child support for more than 60 days. Um, no agriculture enterprise and a few other things you, as you can see here. So go through those, make sure that, that you are in compliance and that you're eligible for this. After you select those, this continue button will pop where you can where you can click on it. So click on that, that'll take us to the next section. So then once we're to the next section, you type in your business name, your EIN, and then select your organization type. This one is just a S corporation. So we're just going to put it as an S corp. Um, is the applicant a nonprofit organization? It is not. Is the applicant a franchisee? No. Um, for just simplicity purposes, <clears throat> we're going to go and look at the, the income statement portion of this. There's really only a few fields you have to fill out, gross revenues and cost of goods sold. So, but recognize this is not for 2019. It's for the 12 months prior to January 31st, 2020. So that's from February 1st, 2019 through January 31st, 2020. So once you find that, you can come and put in what your gross revenues were during that period. Um, just for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to put in the thousand and hundred bucks for those two items. Um, if you have rental properties, there's lost rent, a lost rent section. If you're a nonprofit, specific things. There are also these two sections that are specifically for faith-based entities. Make sure to read to the end of that because like, for example, this one is asking for operating expenses. I'm assuming that the SBA is going to need to know more information, but you don't put it in this section because this is for faith-based entities specifically. Okay, so um, then the next section, compensation from other sources received as a result of the disaster. You don't need to put anything in here. This isn't required right now so if you want to skip that section you can um, for me i'm just going to give them a little bit more information and say i have not received any compensation yet but i am applying for the ppp loan right that way they at least know that you're looking at that and that you're, you're aware of what's going on in the different options so then from there you can put in your primary business address um, if you are auto filling it like i just did it does not like the phone number being autofilled. You'll have to retype that in. So just be aware that that's just one of the bugs with this right now. Um, from there, fill out this information. It's going to ask you for your the date that your business was established. So put that in, 
and then any ownership changes since then. So this business was established in May of 17, but the ownership was actually changed in February of 2018 as I was doing some tax stuff, right? Like filing to become an S Corp. So from here, we can go down and see what our business activity is. And this one is for business services. Our detailed business activity is none of the below because we don't have any of this associated with our business. Um, that list has gotten a little bit bigger actually over the last few days. There's a few extra ones there. This business is simple, so the number of employees is just one. Um, but you can put in your number of employees as of January 31st in that field. So now we go to the next page, our business owner information. Um, don't miss this box right here at the top. It's pretty easy to, to miss as you just keep going through this real quick. But is your business owned by a business entity? This one is not, so I can click no. But if you click yes, it actually gives you different information. So it will give you the legal name, street name, so on and so forth, your EIN. It's, but it's still pretty straightforward, pretty simple. So you should be able to figure that out. And then if you have, select no, then you'll have individuals and owner and individual owner and agents. So from here, we can put in my information real quick and put in my Tyler office. So I'm an owner. Um, we're going to just put me at 100% for this one, and I'll show you how to add other owners at the end of this. I'm going to make up a social security number. And put in my birthday and place of birth. Right, so um, from here I can put in if I'm a U.S. citizen. Yes, I am. And then if I'm going to add an additional owner, if I'm a partnership or just have different owners, you can click this add additional owner box and that will bring up as many owners or agents as you need. So if you click on this, you can now see that it's the same information as the owner above. So I'm not going to go through and fill it out again, um, but you can just add other owners just like you added the first one. So I'm, if I accidentally clicked that, um, I can remove that owner and remove that owner, own, owner again. And then from here, we should be able to look and say, OK, we have everything that we we need. And for some reason, this is not letting me click the next tab now. Why? Okay. Anyway, if that happens, you can just go back and it'll save the information and then come forward. Um, so then you can click to the next page and here is your additional information tab. It pretty much is just making sure that you aren't, don't have any criminal offenses. Um, this one's specifically connected with a riot or civil disorder. This one is just making sure you're not debarred from federal government grants or loans. And then this one is asking about arrests and diagnosed criminal information things of, of that nature. So go through and fill those out based on your knowledge. Um, then from here, this blue section um, is to put anyone who has assisted you in completing this application. So I'm just going to toss in Squire and company for me. Um, again, again, adjust the phone number and the fee charge was $500. Just know you don't have to fill in this area that is just what I'm doing because I'm working for Squire helping myself do this type of thing. So then at the bottom section right here you can give the the SBA permission to discuss this application with this person. Um, it's totally up to you if if you do that or not. I'm going to select no because I don't want them to, to go through Squire. I want them to just talk to me. Um, from here, I want to be considered for the 10,000 advance. Make sure you click that field and then it's going to ask you where to send the funds. So I'm just going to put in a bank. Account number. Oh, and I'm just going to put in a random account number and then the routing number. For this bank. Account. Then from here, I have to, you know, read through this and make sure that I'm. I understand what I'm signing and then certify that you have read this above and it is correct. 
Then from here, you can click next and it's going to go to a summary page and the summary page is going to go through and just show you all the information you just put in. Look through it, verify that everything looks correct. And then you come down here to the bottom, click I'm not a robot and then you can click the submit button. And that is how you apply for the IDL loan. If you have any questions or need anything else, um, let us know at Squire. We're here to help.